welcome to worship with St. Matthew's Lutheran Church here in Fort Worth, Texas. We are so glad that you have chosen to join us. We hope that you will be blessed by word and sacrament and song and celebration. Again, I would invite you, we do celebrate the sacrament during our worship time. So if you wish to go get a liquid, wine, juice, something like bread, crackers, whatever, to have them ready when we do partake in Holy Communion. You are welcome because this is God's table and all are welcome at God's table. Also, you will notice that some of our songs and a little bit of our liturgy speaks of Christmas. Today we are celebrating Christmas in July. During July, we have adopted the Fort Worth Pregnancy Center to provide them Christmas in July, to provide them with things that they need to help families who are welcoming new children into this world at this time. So that's our Christmas in July. We also thank you for continuing to support the ministry of St. Matthew's, that we might do God's work with our hands and our heart. We hope you have a blessed week and that you may see God's kingdom, God's kingdom of love and joy come near. Have a great and blessed week. Now let's go worship together. Hey Adam, what's happening on Tuesday? Oh my goodness, Tuesday? Tuesday! Oh great! So there's this really special thing. There is? For the families, specifically for the kids yeah. at our church. Yeah. And we're going to be sending out, it's kind of like a, a Sunday school type thing. Oh. But you've got like a cool story. You've got like a craft. A craft? A craft. You've got a what do they need for the craft? Oh my. So for the craft, parents, listen. This is your turn to listen, okay? Ears on. You're going to need a paper towel roll. Not the whole roll, just the cardboard part for the craft. Now, you can also get some wrapping paper, or you can just get like a plain piece of paper that your kids can color on and decorate. Or you can just use a paper towel roll and they can decorate that. Or you can be really plain and just use a paper towel roll. Oh, you got to have some glitter there somewhere, oh, I'm ooh, sure. Sequence, bright and shimmery. So... There's also going to be something coming in the mail for your kids. It's not for you. It's for your kids, I promise. It's going to have stuff for the craft. So you want to make sure that you're looking out for that. Okay? And on Tuesday, on our Facebook page... Um, S-M-L-C-F-W Community. You want me to say that, that again? That rolls right off the tongue, doesn't it? St. Matthew's Lutheran Church Fort Worth Community. Yeah, right there in our little private Facebook page, we're going to have the video of us doing Sunday school. It's going to be great. And, and you're the song man. Are you going to sing? I'm going to sing, and so are my children. <gasps> really? Right. Not yet. You, yeah. had a, you had to bribe them, I bet. Well, that's just between us. Oh, all right. So, hey, but look for it, because it'll be up there. Starting around like 10 o'clock on Tuesday that morning, That sounds great. Just okay. once you, you know, rub the sleeve crust down. we're going to do this every yeah. Tuesday, right? Every single Tuesday until... God comes. Right. Okay. So we're looking forward to seeing you there. So, Roxy's excited. We hope you all are. Bye. Bye. Welcome to Family Faith Adventures with Roxy. You know, I was trying to explain the Bible story to her today about what the kingdom of heaven might look like. And it talks about things that are very small, like mustard seeds, but they grow into these amazing bushes that provide a place of safety for birds. And then about this little bit of yeast that provides loaves and loaves of bread that feed, and that pearl that provides treasure. And Roxy thought about something that's very small that brings her great joy. And I think you can tell by the way she's trying to get to my hand, she knows that her little bitty treats 
bring her great joy. They bring her great flavor and it makes her happy. Something little can be used by God to bless others. So think about it. What gifts do you have that might seem very small to you, but shared, God uses them for big blessings. You know that smile that you have? That is a gift. So this week, share your smile with others, and God will use it to remind people of love and joy and happiness. And you know that ability to be kind and to share things with others? God can use that too. Even though you might think that it's not anything big, let God take it and bless others. Roxy and I hope you have a great week that you might find many ways to share God's love with others, knowing first that Jesus loves you and all the world. Bye! We'll see you next week. We gather for worship in the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. We come confessing our sins, confident in God's grace and forgiveness. Blessed be the Holy Trinity, one God, the parent who rouses us from slumber, the shepherd who gathers us on the holy mountain, and the deliverer who sets us free. Amen. Amen. Let us come before the living God in confession. As we wait and we watch for the promised day of salvation, we open, we open our, our hearts, hearts to you, you O oh God. God. Reveal all that we keep inside. To you, O oh God, we confess our sins, known and unknown. Forgive, forgive us, renew us, and lead us, us in, your in your ways of justice and peace. Make, make us reflections of the radiant love of your, of your beloved, beloved Son, Jesus, Jesus Christ. Christ. Amen. Beloved children of the Most High, we are gathered before the righteous judge who has mercy on us all. Splash exuberantly in the waters of baptism where sin is washed away in the river of life. Dwell peacefully in the loving arms of the one who nurtures all creation. Go forth boldly and the assurance that our sins are forgiven in the name of the one who is coming and who is already here, Jesus Christ, our Savior and Lord. Amen. Amen. God's creative task is the labor of people who struggle to see how God's truth and justice set everybody free. People of Israel, you heard the prophet tell, a virgin mother will bear Emmanuel. She conceived him, God, with us. Our brother whose birth restores hope and courage to children of this earth. Mountains and valleys will have to be prepared. New highways opened, new protocols declared. Almost here, God is nearing in beauty and grace. All clear every gateway. Come out in haste. We first.
first saw Jesus, a baby in a crib. This same Lord Jesus today has come to live. In our world he is present, in neighbors we see. Our Jesus is with us and ever sets us free. The grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, and the communion of the Holy Spirit be with you all. And also with you. Yeah. Let us pray. Beloved and sovereign God, through the death and resurrection of your Son, you bring us into your kingdom of justice and mercy. By your Spirit, give us your wisdom that we may treasure the life that comes from Jesus Christ, our Savior and Lord. Amen. A reading from 1 Kings. At Gibeon, the Lord appeared to Solomon in a dream at night by night and God said ask what I should give you and Solomon said you have shown great and steadfast love to your servant my father David because he walked before you in faithfulness in righteousness and in uprightness of heart toward you and you have kept for him this great and steadfast love and have given him a son to sit on his throne today and now O Lord my God you have made your servant king in place of my father David. Although I am only a little child, I do not know how to go out or come in. And your servant is in the midst of the people whom you have chosen, a great people, so numerous they cannot be numbered or counted. Give your servant, therefore, an understanding mind to govern your people, able to discern between good and evil. For who can govern this, your great people? It pleased the Lord that Solomon had asked this. God said to him, Because you have asked this, and have not asked for yourself long life or riches, or for the life of your enemies, but have asked for yourself understanding to discern what is right, I now do according to your word. Indeed, I give you a wise and discerning mind. No one like you has been before you, and no one like you shall arise after you. Word of God, 
word of life. Together, let us read responsively Psalm 119, verses 129 through 136. Your decrees are wonderful, therefore I obey them with all my heart. When your word is opened, it gives light, it gives understanding to the simple. I open my mouth and pant because I long for your commandments. Turn to me and be gracious to me, as you always do to those who love your name. Order my footsteps in your word, let no iniquity have dominion over me. Rescue me from those who oppress me, and I will keep your commandments. Let your face shine upon your servant, and teach me your statutes. My eyes shed streams of tears, because people do not keep your teaching. When, when your, your word is, is opened, opened, it, it gives, gives light and understanding. A reading from Romans. The Spirit helps us in our weakness. For we do not know how to pray as we ought, but that very spirit intercedes with sighs too deep for words. And God, who searches the heart, knows what, the, what is the mind of the spirit, because the spirit intercedes for the saints according to the will of God. We know that all things work together for good for those who love God, who are called according to his purpose. For those whom he foreknew, he also predestined to be conformed to the image of his Son, in order that he might be the firstborn within a large family. And those whom he predestined, he also called. And those whom he called, he also justified. And those whom he justified, he also glorified. What then are we to say about these things? If God is for us, who is against us? He who did not withhold his own son, but gave him up for all of us, will he not with him also give us everything else? Who will bring any change against God's elect? It is God who justifies. Who is to condemn? It is Christ Jesus who died. Yes, who was raised. Who is at the right hand of God, who intercede, indeed intercedes for us? Who will separate us from the love of Christ? Will hardship, or distress, or persecution, or famine, or nakedness, or peril, or sword, as it is written, for your sake we are being killed all day long. We are accounted as sheep to be slaughtered. No, in all these things we are more than conquerors through him who loved us. For I am convinced that neither death, nor life, nor angels, nor rulers, nor things present, nor things to come, nor powers, nor height, nor depth, or anything else in all creation, will be able to separate us from the love of God in Christ Jesus our Lord. Word of God, word of life. The Holy Gospel, according to St. Matthew, the 13th chapter. Glory to you, O Lord. Jesus told the crowd another parable. The kingdom of heaven is like a mustard seed that someone took and sowed in his field. It is the smallest of all the seeds, but when it has grown, it is the greatest of shrubs and becomes a tree, so that the birds of air come and make nests in its branches. He told them another parable. The kingdom of heaven is like yeast that a woman took and mixed in with three measures of flour until all of it was leavened. The kingdom of heaven is like a treasure hidden in a field which someone found and hid, that in his joy 
he goes and sells all that he has and buys that field. Again, the kingdom of heaven is like a merchant in search of fine pearls. On finding one pearl of great value, he went and he sold all that he had and he bought it. Again, the kingdom of heaven is like a net that was thrown into the sea and caught fish of every kind. When it was filled, they drew it ashore, sat down and put the goods into baskets, but threw out the bad. So it will be at the end of the age. The angels will come out and they will separate the evil from the righteous and throw them into the furnace of fire where there will be weeping and gnashing of teeth. Have you understood all of this, Jesus asked? They answered, yes. And he said to them, Therefore, every scribe who has been trained for the kingdom of heaven is like the master of a household who brings out his treasures and treasures what is new and what is old. The gospel of our Lord. Praise, Praise to you, O Christ. Grace, peace, and mercy to you from God our Father and from our Lord and Savior. Please join me in prayer. O oh, good and gracious God, we hear Jesus' description of heaven, of those small things that can do amazing work with you. God, forgive us when we sell you short when we do not use our gifts, even if they seem small, knowing and be reassured today that even the smallest of gifts can be used for the kingdom of heaven to come near. At the kingdom of your heaven, which is love and mercy and grace, comes near in this world through our actions, through our deeds, and through our words. May we be your mustard seed, your yeast, and your pearl. Give us the power through the Holy Spirit to bring through our actions, through your spirit, the kingdom of heaven near to all. We ask all of this in your son's name. Amen. Amen. Each week, as I read the prescribed text for the Sunday's Gospel, I normally bring questions to the text, questions that have come from my experiences throughout the week, concerns that you all have shared with me, concerns from family and friends, and my own concerns. Well, I have to tell you, this week is no different. The questions I bring to the text are about the state of our current world. They reflect the pain, the deep pain that some of you are experiencing and the uncertainty that we are all experiencing. I look for the hope in the text. Maybe not specific answers to my questions, although that would be great and I would celebrate. But more, where is the hope that feeds me so that I can go forward in faith? So as I see the COVID cases reaching 4 million and over 140,000 deaths, in the United States, and at least a thousand new cases daily in the United States, I ask the text, when? When will there be a vaccine? When will everyone do their part in stopping this disease? 
When will we be considerate of others in our actions? By wearing masks, by keeping social distance, by staying in small groups? And when will our actions build up the body of Christ, not tear it down? So I look to the text today for a glimmer of hope and encouragement as I bring the question of when um, to the text. I, Pardon? I hate to interrupt, but... Did you get a phone call or something? What's, what's yeah, you, you just read this text, right? So Yeah. So I even studied it this whole week. Yeah, so let me read a part of it again. Oh, see if it can jar oh. your memory. Okay, thank right? you. So You know, I'm said, old, so my memory uh, is a little... You know. Memory is the first thing to go, I'm sure. <laughs> so it says, The kingdom of heaven is like a mustard seed, which a man took and planted in his field. Though it is the smallest of all seeds, yet when it grows, it's the largest of garden plants and becomes a tree, so that the birds come and perch in its branches. So... I hear what you're saying, but tell me, what does that have to do with the fact that parents and kids right now are facing an incredible decision of whether they go back to school in the fall in person or they're online? Do they sacrifice community and stay a little bit safer because they stay at home? So. I'm just struggling with this text helping me understand well, hope. Okay, so let me, okay. You got more? I'm going to read another section. Okay, okay, good, um, great. You know, I am a little thick. Sure, it's fine. Good, You've thanks. We only had a week with it, so it's fine. <laughs> uh, the kingdom of heaven is like yeast that a woman took and mixed into about 60 pounds of flour until it worked all through the dough. Okay, that's great. I love bread. Oh, yes. Um, but I'm still struggling. You know, I see the glimmer of hope when it comes to heaven, but I need that glimmer of hope here on the earth. I want to know when the violence in the United States will end. I want to know when everyone, everyone, and the creation is treated equal, has the same value. I want to know. When? You got any more answers, maybe? I, no, I do. There's more to this passage. Is there? Oh, good. There is. It's great. So It's for thick-headed people like, like me, three, right? There's four or five things in here. It's really wonderful. <laughs> so maybe this will... Okay, all right. Me. The kingdom of heaven is like treasure hidden in a field. When a man found it... I don't know what it is about a man. Ah, yeah, well, person. When a child of God found it there we go. and hid it again, and then in their joy went and sold all they had and bought that field. Again, the kingdom of heaven is like a merchant looking for fine pearls. When they found one of great value, they went away and sold everything they had and bought it. So you are helping me a little bit. You know, I'm slow. It's fine. Grace. Grace it about it. Thanks. <laughs> I mean, I'm getting the hint that small things in God's hands can do amazing things. Maybe, is that maybe the hope? You know, I'm, today we're celebrating Christmas in July. Mm. If you look at some of the hymns, one's an Advent hymn, one's a Christmas hymn. We're looking at the justice that Jesus brings starting at his birth through his death and resurrection. And when I think about small things, I especially think of that song, uh, The Little Drummer Boy. Yes. You know that one? Oh, I know the exact spot. You do? Okay. And so is it... What um, is it? I have no gift to bring, pa rum pum 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 That's fit to give our king, pa rum pum 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 I played my drum for him, pa rum pum 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 I played my best for him, pa rum pum pum pum, rum pum pum pum, rum pum pum pum. Then he smiled at me, pa rum pum pum pum. Smiled at me. Me and my drum. That wow, yeah. Okay, thanks for being patient. You think you got I, it I, think, I think maybe I got it. I'm gonna go sit down and listen, and I'm gonna see if you got it. Okay. You gonna keep score? Yes, I'll okay. take notes. Okay, all right. 
Is it small things that seem inconsequential, like the drummer boy and his drum, really are not inconsequential? That they really are important because if we bring them to God, God will do amazing things. You know, good things can come from small things. And unfortunately, we've also learned the opposite this year, that bad things can come from small things, like the small virus called COVID that has had the power to change this world. But God breaks in to that world and tells us that the kingdom of heaven comes from each of us sharing the resources that we have been given, no matter how small they seem. I know the text gives me a glimmer of hope for heaven, but I think it also gives me a glimmer of hope now for today, for this world. Because you know, in the Lord's Prayer, Every time we pray it, we pray, God's kingdom come. And in this text, we are reminded that we are to bring our gifts, no matter how small, how inconsequential they might seem, bring them to God, and God uses them to do miraculous things. Just like the mustard seed was able to provide shelter for the birds of the air, and the yeast was able to feed amazing amounts of people, and the pearl was a treasure that could provide resources for people. Once it is uncovered and becomes visible, those small things, in God's hands, it offers sustenance and grace for the life of the world. There we go. There is where the hope lies in this text. God can take the small things and provide for God's kingdom. This month, we have been actually practicing that proof. We have adopted the Fort Worth Pregnancy Center for the month of July because we found out that their needs had increased by 67% in two months. And they were really struggling with helping the families of newborn children. And so we gathered what might seem small to us, a few diapers, a couple of bibs, some pacifiers, and all those things that you need when you have a new child, and are bringing them to the center this week. God will bless that and work with those families so they might experience perhaps for the first time, the kingdom of heaven coming near to them in God's love and mercy and grace through our hands doing God's work. So the visible signs of the kingdom of God in this time and in this place give us hope no matter how small they seem, know that God can do amazing things with them. Know that as Paul tells us, that neither death nor life, nor angels, nor rulers, nor things present, nor things to come, nor power, nor height, nor depth, nor anything, will be able to separate us from the love of God in Christ Jesus our Lord. My prayer this week is we, like the drummer boy, 
knowing that we are loved by God and then called to love others. Keep bringing our gifts and let God do the work of making them the kingdom of God so it might come near to all people, to the creation here and now. Amen. Together with all of God's church, we profess our faith in the words of the Apostles' Creed. I believe in God, the Father Almighty, creator of heaven and earth. I believe in Jesus Christ, God's only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended to the dead. On the third day, he rose again. He ascended into heaven. He is seated at the right hand of the Father, and he will come to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. Confident of your care and sustained by the Holy Spirit, we pray for the church, the world, and all who are in need. Merciful God, your reign is revealed to us in common things. A mustard shrub, a woman baking bread, a fishing net. Help your church witness to the surprising yet common ways you encounter us in daily life. Lord, in your mercy. When your word is opened, it gives light and understanding. Increase our understanding and awe of your creation. Guide the work of scientists and researchers. Treasuring the earth, may we live as grateful and healing caretakers of our home. Lord, in your mercy. 
As the birds of the air nest in branches of trees, gather the nations of the world into the welcoming shade of your merciful reign. Direct leaders of nations to build trust with each other and walk in the way of peace. Lord, in your mercy. Your spirit helps us in our weakness and intercedes for the saints according to your will. Help us when we do not know how to pray. Give comfort to the dying, refuge to the weary, justice to those who are oppressed, and healing to the sick, especially Andy, Andy Bell, Philip Cunningham, Ben Helms, the mother of Glee Helms, Ross King, John McCloskey, Ethan Podal, Karen, Avis, Maureen, and her husband, Danny. We also pray for those who are homebound, Craig Bridges, TJ and Dorothy Bridges, Eva Clifton, Anna Sophia Reese, Barbara Reed, as well as for those who mourn. TJ and Dorothy Bridges, in the death of TJ's brother, Ray Bridges, and Ray's wife, Ruby, who died the previous week. And for Ed Gill, who mourns the loss of his mother, Gloria. Lord, in your mercy. Hear our you show steadfast love and direct us to ask of you what we need. Help this congregation ask boldly for what is most needed. Refresh us with new dreams of being your people in this place and time. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Now, what do the people of God ask of God? God, we thank you that you have indeed given us gifts. And when we doubt those gifts, when we think they're so small that we can't do anything with them, forgive us and forgive our doubting. And send the power of your Holy Spirit to inspire us to share those gifts. That you might use them so that all might experience your kingdom coming near. Your kingdom of love. Your kingdom of acceptance. Of forgiveness. And of mercy. Lord, in your mercy. Hear our prayer. For all our prayers, spoken aloud and in our hearts, which God hears, Lord, in your mercy. Hear our prayer. In you, our lives are never lost. Strengthen us by the inspiring witness of your people in all times and places. Embolden our witness now, and one day gather us with all your saints in light. Lord, in your mercy. Hear, Hear our prayer. In certain hope that nothing can separate us from your love, we offer these prayers to you through Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. Amen. It is at this time that we bring our gifts to God, our gifts of time and talent and treasure our gifts that we at St. Matthew's are called then to use for God's world, that others might experience the kingdom of heaven coming near to them through the signs of God's love in a tangible way. Thank you for your continued support of this ministry and mission as we continue to do God's work with our hands. We, I invite you now to set your hearts and minds and think about all that God has given each and every one of us as we listen to our offering of music.
Let us pray. God of goodness, of goodness and growth, all creation is yours, and your faithfulness is as firm as the heavens. Water and word, wine and bread, these are signs of your abundant grace. Nourish us through these gifts that we might proclaim your steadfast love in our communities and in the world. Through Jesus Christ, our strength and our song. Amen. The peace of the Lord be with you always. And also with you. I invite you at this time to share God's peace one with another. Peace. 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 On that Monday, Thursday, as the Lord gathered with his disciples for the Last Supper, he invited them that when they gathered each time to remember, to remember his sacrifice of body and blood and his love given up in the cross and the amazing love in that empty tomb. And so we gather as part of our worship and remember the sacrifice and the love. And all are invited because this is God's table and God's welcome. In the night in which our Lord was betrayed, he took the bread and he broke it. And he gave it to his disciples, saying, Take and eat. This is my body given for you. Do this in remembrance of me. And after the supper, he took the cup. And he gave thanks, and he gave it to all to drink, saying, This cup is the new covenant in my blood, shed for all people, for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in remembrance of me. And we are bold and confident to pray. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come. Thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever and ever. Come, the table is ready. I invite you now to feed one another. And as you hand the bread to your loved one or to yourself, which I hope is a loved one for you as well, say the body of Christ given for you. And as you offer the wine or juice, the blood of Christ given for you. Amen. And the body. God of the welcome table. In this meal, we have feasted on your goodness and have been united by your presence among us. Empower us to go forth sustained by these gifts 
so that we may share your love with all. Through Jesus Christ, the giver of abundant life. Amen. As you go about your week, may you remember that God has gifted each and every one of us, given us a little piece of the kingdom of heaven that God might use for the kingdom of heaven to come near to all. May we be God's light in this world. May we bring those gifts so that indeed when we pray, thy kingdom come. God will use our gifts so that the kingdom may come for all and to all. And as you go out, please receive the blessing of our Lord. May the Lord bless you and keep you. May the Lord lift his face to shine upon you. May he keep you in his grace, in his mercy, and in his love. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen.
in peace. The Spirit sends us out to serve. We will. Thanks, and thanks be to God. <laughs>